Writing a good performance measure requires four essential parts to make it both understandable and implementable. Do your measures or KPIs have all four of these parts? Let's find out. When we write our measures or KPIs as two or three word phrases, like customer loyalty, employee engagement, turnaround time, and sales call efficiency, it makes it almost impossible to implement or report them properly. The trouble with writing a measure or KPI with just a few words is that it leaves too much ambiguity about how exactly it is calculated. You don't have a real measure until you've articulated how its values will be calculated. And that means we need to know exactly how to write quantitative KPIs and measures. Take customer loyalty, for example. We could argue that the values of this measure could be calculated in several different ways. The median number of sales per customer, or the total number of years that each customer has been purchasing from us, or the percentage of the customer base who have given us repeat business, or average rating of likelihood that the customer will continue purchasing from us, or net promoter score. And no doubt, there are many more ways that we could quantify customer loyalty. And what if customer loyalty is really more than just one of these quantitative calculations? Each measure name should focus on quantifying a single attribute. We can't leave our measure calculation to chance like this. It's like um, baking a, a chocolate souffle. If we don't get the recipe right, it's guaranteed to flop. For meaningful KPIs, a recipe can help us avoid flops too. We can make our KPIs and measures easier to understand and implement accurately by using a four-part recipe for how we write their quantitative description, and then we can give them a more deliberately chosen name. Now, part one of a quantitative KPI is its statistic. So we decide what the best form of summary statistic is to turn the raw data into values of the measure. There are five basic ways that we can quantify KPIs or measures, a number or count, a total or sum, a percentage, an average or a ratio of, of two different measures. Of course, there are other statistics that we can use, but they're less common, uh, like median or mode, maximum, minimum, and range. Usually, the statistic begins the description, as you can see uh, in these example measures with the statistics highlighted in bold for you. Order turnaround time, average number of days, from order request to order delivery for completed deliveries calculated weekly, commercial waste to landfill, percentage of tons of waste produced that is sent to landfill for commercial organizations by quarter, new referred customers, number of new customers referred by an existing customer by month, operating costs, total expenditure on day-to-day -day business operations by month. Sales speed, total revenue received divided by average sales lead time by quarter. And clearly this one is a ratio of two measures. Now, if you don't include this first part of the KPI uh, recipe, then you aren't really measuring anything because you're not making it clear how performance is being quantified. Every meaningful performance measure has a deliberately chosen quantification statistic. Now part two of a quantitative KPI uh, is the performance attribute data item or items. Clearly identify the data item or data items that you're applying the statistic to. What exactly are you averaging? What exactly are you counting? What exactly are you taking a percentage of? In taking a percentage, you really have two performance attribute data items. Um, so take this example. Commercial waste to landfill is the percentage of tons of waste produced that is sent to landfill for commercial operations by quarter. Now the two performance attribute data items are, are the tons of waste produced and the tons of waste sent to landfill. But for this measure, 
quantified using uh, count new customers is the only performance data item. So the measure is new referred customers, the number of new customers referred by an existing customer by month. Now you might be wondering what about referred by existing customers? Well that's not a performance data item but it is a different kind of data item as you'll see now in part three of a quantitative KPI which is the scope data items. Scope data items define the extent of the performance area that the measure should relate to. They define what to include in the measure or what to exclude. They define the subset of the whole performance area that the measure should tell us something about. In this measure description, the scope data item is referred by an existing customer. So again, new referred customers is the measure. The number of new customers referred by an existing customer by month. You can imagine in a, a data set of, of all customers that there, there might be a field that flags how the customers found out about the company. And one of the values of this field could be existing customer. Um, other values might be web search or TV advertisement or social media, that kind of thing. And for a couple more measures, the scope data items here are also in bold. For order turnaround time, the average number of days from order request to order delivery for completed deliveries calculated weekly. Or for commercial waste to landfill, the percentage of tonnes of waste produced that is sent to landfill for commercial organisations by quarter. Now, not every measure has a scope data item, but it is essential to give it some thought, just in case you discover the measure has more meaning if it's a little less diluted. Now, part four of a quantitative KPI is the temporal data item. Now, contrary to popular practice, the frequency with which you measure something should not be chosen to match exactly with the reporting frequencies. I mean, they can be aligned, but just because you have a monthly report, it does not mean that your measures values all have to be calculated monthly. The frequency of your measures calculation really should be chosen as frequent enough to detect signals as soon as it's possible, but not so frequent that your signals kind of drown out in noise. Most measures have too low a frequency and therefore give very dull or delayed signals. Now your chosen frequency of calculation for your measure becomes the temporal data item to include in your measures description, uh, like you can notice in bold for these measures. For order turnaround time, the average number of days from order request to order delivery for completed deliveries calculated weekly. For commercial waste to landfill, which is the percentage of tonnes of waste produced that is sent to landfill for commercial organisations by quarter. And new referred customers, the number of new customers referred by an existing customer by month. Now, if you're not yet sure how frequently to calculate a measure, err on the side of too frequent and make your final decision when you see the measure's values calculated and displayed in a time series chart. So, for example, if you're not sure if a measure should be monthly or quarterly, start with monthly and only change to quarterly if it appears that you, you really don't have enough data uh, for monthly to make any sense. Is writing a KPI or measure really that simple? Well, yes and no. You need to follow this four-part recipe as the framework of writing a quantitative performance measure or KPI, but your performance measure might have a more complex calculation that needs more than one statistic or several performance attribute data items or a few scope data items. A good example of complexity is this performance measure. International training gross profit margin, the total sales revenue less the total cost of sales expressed as a percentage of total revenue for all training workshops that are held internationally by quarter. But always start simple and small when you're trying something new and that way you'll lay a solid foundation of know-how and you'll be much better prepared to tackle the more complex KPIs. 
So put some time into making your KPIs understandable and implementable. The first tremendous advantage of writing our KPIs and performance measures quantitatively with this four part recipe is that it's far easier for anyone and everyone to understand what we're really trying to measure. Rarely do we have a measure that doesn't need the buy-in of others and buy-in is impossible without understanding. The second tremendous advantage is that it's easier to work out what data you need and how to turn that data into the values of your performance measure. And this means that we'll have a much higher chance of success in implementing each KPI the way it was intended to be implemented. And this recipe isn't just useful for new KPIs. I mean, do you have any KPIs or performance measures that people just don't understand or, or cannot implement? Well, they are perfect candidates to improve by reworking them to follow this recipe. And of course, if you have any stories or examples to share or you want to ask a question, I would love to hear from you in the comments.